Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. Today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and we give it a makeover. I'm going to wait for a few of you to join me live, and I'll talk about the weather because that's always a safe topic. Um, well, safe when it's not miserable out, and today's a glorious day. We had a lot of um, gray days, and yesterday we had a bit of snow here in the Boston area, but it wasn't too bad or anything. And um, it was a holiday here, um, but I, I did work yesterday. Um, but uh, today the sun is out and it is just absolutely gorgeous out there. And uh, so um, I don't know, there's something about the sun that I think ever energizes people. And it certainly has me energized this morning. Uh, good morning, Pam. I see you've popped in here and thank you for sharing my video. That's really nice of you. So let's talk about Casing Tuesday. So this is a card challenge where you can play along and you can join us over on our Facebook group. And if you uh, look down below, I have a whole bunch of links for you. So if you're ever looking for any information, um, look below, expand that um, section down below and you'll find links to the products I'm using. You'll find a link to my blog. You'll find a link to the Casing Tuesday Facebook group where you can share the card that you make. And um, today's card, let me share with you what today's card looks like. This is it right here. And don't be intimidated by all of these layers. Sometimes when I see a card like this, I go, oh man, this is going to be hard. But basically, if you if you kind of just break it down, I always look at the focal point layer first. And I don't know what the focal point maybe of this card is. It, it could be the greeting or it could be the little flower heart. Um, but uh, I focused in on the circular element because that's where I knew I was going to put my stamped image. So start with that and then build everything else around it. And this card kind it it's I like I love it a lot, um, but it uses kind of a non-traditional combination of colors. So you can bring it into a more traditional realm if you want to. And my card, I think, is definitely more traditional than this card is. So you'll see mine in a second. And here is the sketch uh, for, the, for the card today. And this is just a starting point. You don't have to follow these measurements exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure my measurements are not exact to this. But this is great for a beginner who will just need a little help finding those measurements to begin with. And if you're a true beginner, maybe what I truly what I would do is I would take computer paper and I would cut all of these layers exactly as they are. And then I would start to play with it from there just to, so you can kind of get an idea of, you know, the starting point and everything. So this sample was on page 10 of the January to April 2023 mini catalog. So if you have that catalog, you can just work right off of the catalog. And if you don't have the catalog, you just have, maybe you just do stuff um, online, um, then you can absolutely go to our Facebook group or go to my blog post and pull off the images that you need. All right, I see a bunch of you are on here this morning. Good morning, Mary and Marty and Janine. So good to see you here. So I will talk to all of you at the end if you're joining me a little later. And I'm going to switch over. Oh, and one thing, don't let me forget because I'll probably forget to do this. Um, I made a um, box. Uh, I made cookies yesterday. And our son is finally living in the US for a little bit. He was up um, at school in Canada uh, at a university there, but he's on a work term in San Francisco. I'm gonna talk to talk about him a lot this, this um, next four months. And I've never sent him care packages before. Now you might think that maybe I'm a bad mother. 
I, I'm not a bad mother. I don't think I am. But um, the reason I haven't sent him care packages to Canada is one, they take such a long time to send even if I were to send it quickly and second of all um, the cost I just can't justify spending that kind of money to send something over the border that is worth less than the shipping so that was just absolutely crazy and also during COVID, which um, he was at school a lot during COVID, um, the delay in shipping time, like just the, the customs delay was just crazy. So I've never ever had that opportunity to send him care packages before. But now he's in the US. And so it's I don't have to deal with borders. I can use a flat rate shipping box. So I baked some cookies last night and I wanna share with you the box that I'm putting them in. So don't let me forget, because it matches this adorable owl stamp set that I'm using today. So um, sometimes I have these great ideas and then I forget to show them to you. All right, let me pop over to my um, card for the day. Here it is. Look at my little card. Isn't this cute? Okay, the adorable owls stamp set is my... Um, favorite celebration item out of the celebration mini catalog. Let's talk about that for a second. This is our reward catalog for January and February. So if you spend 50 or for every 50 or $100 you spend, you get to pick a product out of here. So that it's just really cool. So we've got the adorable owls, which is one of the choices. We've got a thanks a bunch, which is this cute little carrot stamp set. And we've got a bunch of papers. We've got the dainty flowers paper. It's beautiful 12 by 12 paper. Um, we've got a couple other papers in the $50. Uh, for $50. There's the Day at the Farm paper. We've got this nice stamp set called Sending Support. Look at those nice greetings. Um, one of my um, team members pointed out she really liked the stamp set because um, one of the greetings is it's okay not to feel okay. You know, it, it is. It is. Hopefully that feeling won't last for very long, but um, you know, th these are just really nice Nice greetings. Oh, and then there's this beautiful favored flowers paper. And then we have a couple others. Um, we've got Beautifully Happy, which is a $100 level. Oh, and then there's this beautiful paper here too, Dandy Designs. Now this is a big paper pack and it's also free with a $100 um, purchase. So for every 50 or $100 you spend, you can pick one of those items. And I love that they have paper because even if you don't like the stamp sets, you can stock up on that beautiful paper. But Adorable Owls is one of those and it's so cute. And I use the greeting from the stamp set too. And then on the inside, look, isn't it cute? I did a little happy birthday. And um, so this is the celebration reward. I pulled the happy birthday from um, this one happy family stamp set. And I love the greetings in here. And I'll show you, I used a different greeting on the box that I'm sending my son. And then I'm using the stylish shapes dies because I love, look at the little stitching on the edge of the circle and on the edge of the banner. So these are really fun. So let me show you how I made this card. So first of all, the card base. And I started off with, this was a half sheet of eight and a half by 11. And then this piece is 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. And I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. And then I am just going to fold this, use my bone folder and smooth down that fold. And my card base opens like that. Then I took a piece, this is country gingham paper. Let me just share with you this paper. It's kind of got three colors in it, balmy blue, mint macaron, petal pink, and it's got these gingham, they're spring gingham beautiful patterns. It's just a lovely, lovely spring paper. Neutrals. And I took a piece of the balmy blue pattern paper and I cut this to three and three quarters by five inches. 
and I am just going to plop that right on to the center of the card front. Oops, let me lift that off for a second so I can position it. All right, so that is the beginning and now we have to get into more of the details, the, the core of the card. Let me first pull out two things I'm going to need. I need two scrap pieces of paper and I'm going to take my tuxedo blinding pad, which I cleverly put away, but is out of reach. Here we go. Let's pull this open. And I've got the birthday owl already on a D block. I trimmed around my owl. And I'm gonna stamp this just a little to the left on my paper, because I kind of, um, cut my paper exactly to my side. I hope, let me just check to make sure that this will fit around here. Ooh, it's gonna be close, but I think it will work. Okay, I probably did a little bit too much to the left because I just wanna make sure that um, my circle will actually cut a full circle, but I think I'm gonna be okay. So then I'm going to take the little greeting that says my friend and just stamp it on the skinny piece right here. Okay, so now we're gonna do some die cutting and I'm gonna bring out my little boho mini. This is the boho blue colored stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's the mini machine and this one can be earned on a starter kit order. If you order this $129 starter kit right now you will get this machine plus $175 worth of product. That is just like the most awesome deal ever. So um, if you don't already have a mini machine and you're not already a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, think about this. It's such a great deal. If you already have a mini machine, you can still get the $99 starter kit and it has the special, It is you get $175 worth of product just with the $99 starter kit, but with a $129 starter kit, you can get the Boho Blue Machine just a wonderful deal. Okay, so to use this machine, you'll need the base platform number one. If your machine is very tight and you have trouble getting the sandwich through, try switching to the number three plate, which also comes with your machine. Okay, all of these plates come with your machine, so you're ready to go when it arrives. I'm going to use um, a clear plate next. We're going to put our little owl image on here. I'm going to take the second largest stylish shapes die. And I'm just, I'm gonna stand up. I find it easier to cut when I'm standing. So let me hope that I've got that not too far. Put the second clear plate on top and let's crank this through. Okay. Oh shoot. See, I cut that off. I'm gonna have to do that again. Okay. That is okay. I stamped it too far over into the corner. Let me grab my scrap. I'm coming back over. We're gonna do a quick little stamping over here. So I could use this owl on another project. I just, I stamped too far over on my piece, not thinking. But I do, I do want to kind of have the luxury. I could also cut the circle first and then stamp, but I kind of, sometimes it's easier to stamp and then put, position the circle. So that's what I was trying to do. So I could have done it the other way around. Now I won't have a problem. 
Let me try this one more time. Okay. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. It shifted. Okay. I can also pin things down from shifting with some labeling and cover up tape. So let's do that real quick. Sometimes, you know, when you're putting that top plate on, there's, you can shift your, or hit the machine, and then that shifts the um, circle on top of the owl or whatever you're cutting, and then you'll end up not cutting where you want it to cut. Okay, so now we have an owl that works. And then let's grab my greeting over here. And we're going to use this teeny tiny banner right here. And I think I will use that tape again, of course. Now the tape is, ah, I stuck it back up there. Okay. So we're going to just gonna line this up. And then we'll put this piece down. Put that away. And we'll run this through. And we're going to do a couple other things with the die cutting machine. Let's pop this out. There's my little banner. And I want to show you that I can create some banners with this die set. And let me, where did they go? Aha. Let's see them. So I want to create some banners for the background of my, this one. And so I've cut these two pieces. This one's four and a quarter by seven eighths. Actually, it's just a little bit shorter than seven eighths. And this one's three and three quarters and just a little shorter than seven eighths. And then I can take this and I can, I'm going to extend the banners on these. Actually, I need, I need this one. This is the biggest banner. And I'm just going to come through here and I'm going to slide this through over top of this side, but actually we're not even going to go and roll that all the way through. I'm just going to banner cut this very end piece. Make sure it's straight. And what I'll just do is I'm just going to come through and just go over that bump. You kind of feel it with your um, while you're cranking through the machine. And you see that's just gonna create that little banner end. And we'll, we're gonna do that with the banners on both ends. We're just gonna cut off just like a tiny bit. So it's going to be just a little bit shorter than the original. Um, than the original cut that I did. So this one was three and three quarters, so it will end up just being just a teeny tiny bit shorter. Don't, um, the idea is not to die cut it all the way through so that you're just cutting on the end and that way it's going to avoid creating a little bump over on this side. So we'll do the same thing for this one. This is the sweet sorbet. The other color was balmy blue. And you can also, if you want to, you can pin this down with tape. Go over the hump and back. And let's do this other one.
Turn this down. Just go through, go through the hump and back. All right, so now we've got some banners to do some layering with. And if you wanted to, you could just leave them just straight like rectangles. But I like the fact I've got these dies here so I can have fun with that. So the Boho machine, the width of it, just let me show you. This um, can take up to about um, three and a half inches wide. So you can't do everything on here, but this machine is a lot more portable than the big one. It is nice and compact and small. So if you ever need to go anywhere with a embossing machine, this one um, is, is the one that you'll probably want to take because it's just a little bit more uh, portable. Okay, I'm coming back with all my pieces. I can get rid of this and close this up. So let me share with you how I colored this little owl. So I'm going to start off with, use this as a sample, I'm going to start off with my crumb cake dark and we'll do we're gonna do the owl and crumb cake and the fun thing with this owl is i have seen it done in many different colors not even like traditional browns and grays like you would find an e real owl to be out in the wild but people have been doing pink owls and all different colored owls but this is the way i started off coloring the owls when I first got the set and so I kind of I'm a creature of habit so I do kind of once I like something I kind of just go with it so I haven't really changed up how I like to color this okay so there is just the dark part of the owl now I'm gonna switch to crumb cake light so we're gonna do this part of the face here and I'm using my brush tip when you use your brush tip on the Stampin Blends make sure you use it on its side so you don't break down the tip and I'm coming around the beak here I love how with alcohol markers there is no that there's no dot when you lift up the alcohol and the marker just blends everything and you can go and do this very simply like I'm doing you could also come back and shade like go over certain areas to create shading like you know under the nose here you can do that if you want to or you could shade with a different color I'm just keeping it very, very simple. All right, so there's the owl done. I'm going to add some pumpkin pie light to the beak. And I like using light because it's just a little duller than the full force pumpkin pie dark. And then the eyes, I'm going to do balmy blue eyes to match my cardstock color. I'm using balmy blue dark. I'm going to avoid that little dot, which is the light spot in the eye. But I'm going to color everything else. Isn't that pretty? Once you get the eyes going, the owl can really pop. Um, and then I'm going to use some sweet sorbet light just to add a few stripes to this hat right here. And that is all there is to coloring the owl with Stampin' Blends. So then we just need to assemble everything. And I'm going to start off, we kind of have to start at the very, what is layered on the bottom. 
we'll take the sweet sorbet banner and I'm going to put it a little bit towards the bottom. You can use the pattern of the paper to help line up your cardstock. Oops, I shifted a little bit. Then we'll come in with the next layer. I'll just place that just on top of there. Okay. And then we're going to add this little guy right here. About like that. He's so cute, right? And then we'll add the My Friend with some mini dimensionals. You could probably also fit a regular dimensional on here, but um, the mini dimensionals, you can, you don't have to be so careful to make sure that they don't stick out because they're a little smaller. And then we'll just add this over here. We need to leave like a tiny bit of room for the ribbon. Okay, so now I neglected to tie a bow in advance, so let me, let me find my ribbon. Where did it go? All right, my ribbon is absolutely nowhere. Is it over there? I will. It wandered way over there. Okay, so let's create a little bow here. I'm gonna do the bunny ear method. Taking two loops and then tying them together. Let's hope this works. I just need to straighten out my bow. Okay, that looks pretty close to the other bow. We're gonna take this and trim this down. Come to the other side. See if it matches. That's pretty good. And then we're gonna use some tear and tape because that way there's a little bit more surface area for attaching the bow. Okay, I'm pressing this down. Pressing this down. All right, bending the adhesive over, and I'm just gonna add this bow down here just to kind of anchor the whole piece. And that is all there is to it. Now, I did not, I did not stamp a piece for the inside. So let's, I'm just gonna grab a piece of cardstock. I didn't get all my pieces ready this morning. So I've got a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and I'm just gonna line this up the five inch mark cut. And then we're going to cut this at the three and three quarter inch mark. And now we have a piece for the inside. All right, and then I did not put my little owl on a block, but let me grab this owl right here. 
grab another D block. So for the inside, I just wanted to create a birthday card. So I'm just going to stamp this owl part way down, very close to the left side. And then I'm going to grab, this is the happy birthday from the um, One Happy Family stamp set. And I'll just add that right there. So it looks kind of like the owl is saying happy birthday. And I don't think I'm going to color this owl because I colored it the exact same way as the outside. So um, just using crumb cake, um, balmy blue, and uh, pumpkin pie, you can color this and then you just adhere this to the inside. Always recommend doing the coloring before adhering it just in case you make a mistake. It's just easier, you know, to start over. Um, but this piece, if I didn't say it earlier is three and three quarters by five inches and it just adds a little something to the inside of the card look isn't that cute so cute okay i told you i was going to share with you the box that i'm sending our son so um here is the box and i chose to do um a box inside a flat rate box just to make it easier for myself I baked um, some ginger snaps yesterday I know my son loves ginger snaps I'm planning to send him some other cookies um, but I started off with ginger snaps so um, this box fits just inside a flat rate box perfectly so if I close all of this down this is a small flat rate box so if you're in the US, it fits in like snug as a bug in a rug. It's just the right perfect size. Um, and then um, it's got a box bottom and a box top. I used um, a circle punch for the thumb grips. And look at, here's my little owl. And look at, I said, I'm so proud of you. And that greeting comes from the one happy family stamp set is well where is it where is I'm so proud of you right there so um, this is a great little stamp set to celebrate your family um, nice small greetings they make um, perfect greetings for putting on tags um, and you'll recognize the paper um, this is the same paper the country gingham paper I use today um, some mint macaron paper um, this tag I'll just point out comes from the something fancy bundle or you can just buy the die set on its own it's called something fancy dies so I just used um, one this largest tag and I stamped the owl colored him almost the exact same way as before but I used um, shaded spruce uh, for the eyes instead because I kind of wanted to match my color scheme for the box which was um, mint macaron but mint macaron's a little light for the eyes and shaded spruce is just like really makes the owl's eyes pop so um, this is just a very um, cool little box um, the ribbon is actually soft succulent ribbon um, but when you use it with mint macaron they work really well together they're both blue greens so um, I'm sure you can't even tell that this is um, a slightly different shade now you can probably tell but before you probably couldn't so I think that's just it's such a cute little box do you want to know how to make this box the dimensions for the inside well last year I made a get well care package for someone and that box is the same as this box because it also fit into the small flat rate um, box so this one um, I didn't use any trays on the inside um, how I layered the cookies I got 10 
kind of largish ginger snaps in here. Um, my ginger snaps kind of went flat rather than um, small and round and and squat. They were kind of more like like a round cookie like that. So for this one, um, I took a I think it's a gallon size bag, and I. Um, kind of layered um, the cookies, like I opened it up, stuck uh, a layer of cookies, five cookies, then I did a layer of wax paper, and then I did five more cookies on top with another layer of wax paper on top, just to kind of help with um, shifting everything. So that is my little care package that I can send without spending 50 plus dollars for shipping, which was what it would have cost to send something to Canada. It was just absolutely insane. It kind of made me feel like a bad mom because I always heard of everyone sending care packages to their kids. Um, but sometimes, you know, things don't always work out exactly as you want them to but right now I have a chance to to do some special packages for our son and so that's kind of fun so um and I don't know what I'm gonna do next but um this is just the start this is just January right now and um he just uh he just had his first uh, uh week last week of his work term so um he's uh, really enjoying his new job all right, let me pop up my host code for you before I forget. I'm really bad at talking about the business end of things, but um, I love the, I think everyone loves the creative side, but if you want to make things um, and you need products, I want to tell you how to get them and I want to tell you how to get rewarded from me uh, if you get them. So if you spend $50 with me in January 2023 using this coast code right here, this AXBV9HFX uh, host code, you will be getting this beautiful paper called Flowers and More. It is a sampler pack of um, the 12 by 12 paper. This is will be six by six paper that you're getting. And these are the lovely patterns. These are the back side um, of the, the paper. And I am packaging them up in these cute little cellophane bags. And they will be um, shipped out in February. You should get them around mid-February. And that's kind of my reward for ordering $50 with me at least $50 with me in January. There's always a lot more information on my blog about everything that I talk about. Um, if you're interested in the starter kit that I talked about earlier, I'm just gonna pop up my website right here. That is where you should go, qbsquest.com forward slash join, or if that's that forward slash, that always trips me out because I can't figure out forward, backslash, whatever. If you just go to my uh, blog and click on qbsquest.com and go to the starter kit, um, you will find out more information about the starter kit, what it means to join my team. A lot of people are like, oh no, she's gonna make me do classes and I have to sell. Well, guess what? most um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators are actually hobbyists and they join and um, they get a great deal on the starter kit and then they get a 20% discount on all their products. They get to pre-order from the catalog. They get the perks of being on my team because now they're part of like a, like a little community, a little community of the Bee Stampers team Plus, you have access to the wider Stampin' Up! base because Stampin' Up! also has a um, Facebook group that you can be a part of. You can attend Stampin' Up! events. Um, you are just a little bit more connected. And I think it's that connectivity, like that ability to be able to share with other people what you're doing that really makes a hobby a better experience so if you want to have enjoy your stamping hobby even more um, you should consider um, getting the starter kit and joining my team or the wider Stampin' Up! family and um, yeah and, and you'll get a discount while you're doing it and the great starter kit deal that's going on right now so 
All right, enough talk about the starter kit and about ordering and all of that. Um, all the information you will need, if you click over to my blog post, there's a lot of information on that site. Um, and then if that isn't enough, please email me um, or send me a message through my contact form. And I'm always happy um, to answer questions because I'm an inquisitive person myself and I love to have my questions answered. So I hope I will be able to answer all of your questions for you if you have any. All right, let's say hello to all of you. I already said hello to a bunch of you this morning. Uh, Marty said she finally found me oh my goodness uh facebook can be really fun in the morning to try and find people right um uh, janine says she has gray skies oh <laughs> if indiana was a card stock it would be basic gray i'm sorry janine i can't send you sunshine this way but if i send it around the world it will come to you hopefully eventually soon um uh, Good morning, Pam, and she's joining us from North Carolina. Marty says she loves the owls too, yeah. Pam said the big brown truck just brought her first celebration order, Woohoo! Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we got, I got mine in December and I've had a few orders since then, I have to admit, and, but, it doesn't lessen my excitement and um, Pam is talking about the big brown truck because UPS delivers most of our orders um, and so it's it's kind of it's kind of funny when I see a UPS truck even not on my street if I'm out and about it's kind of like oh the UPS truck because it brings me my Stampin' Up supplies it's like Pavlov's dog for uh, Stampin' Up people like oh there's the big brown truck and we start to drool because we know that we're going to have fun playing with our crafting supplies. All right, that was a little segue. Good morning, Ellie. And Ellie has the sunshine that I have here too. Awesome. Mary says, such a sweet owl. They are sweet, aren't they? Um, Betty says, very cute cards. Thank you, Betty. Betty's watching from Oregon. Um, Okay, um, and Betty asked, what box is that owl box? So if you want the dimensions to make this box, I might, I might at some point do a separate blog post on it. But if you want to make that box right now that fits inside a small flat rate box, you need to go to my blog. And I'm just going to really quickly, in the background here, I'm going to search for the exact blog post. It was a get, okay, if you search for get well box on my blog. So um, right at the top of my blog, there's a search bar. And um, it, the blog post was called get well care package tutorial. Um, and if you are on, um, so that will be the video tutorial for the box and you'll just need the top and the the bottom of the box um, and then there is a project sheet for that um, tutorial so if you're on my email list um, you should be able to access my project sheets page um, I usually send that link out in all my um, project sheet emails on Saturdays. Um, uh, it's a banner down at the bottom of the email so you can access that page and grab the project sheet for that. Or you may already have it and it just fits inside the small flat rate box so it's pretty cool. Um, Betty says she knows Nicholas will love it and love the homemade ginger snap cookies. I hope he does. Uh, I hope it, um, I'm trying to send it. Uh, the post office wasn't open yesterday, so I'm trying to send it out on a, on a Tuesday. So we'll hopefully get to him by the end of the week. Um, Marty says he's going to love it. Pam says too cute. Mary says wow expensive. Yeah super expensive to send stuff to Canada in a timely fashion because you know you don't want cookies sitting um, for two or three weeks you know homemade cookies like so it's not a great it is crossing a border you have to declare stuff it is like a bit more of a hassle to do that. Uh, 
Um, Betty says, yummy, 10 ginger snaps. Um, Ellie says, I'm not sure I understand. You probably need to send this to me. Ha <laughs> ha. I love that. <laughs> uh, um, Betty says, okay, I'll look at your blog uh, to get the get well blogs. Okay, great. I'm glad you've uh, figured that out. And Betty, if you can't find it, just send me an email or a contact form and I will um, send you in the right direction to get that. Well, I hope everyone has a great week. I will be um, back live doing a um, YouTube live on Friday. So check me out on YouTube. And that is also at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, I hope you'll join me on Fridays. I usually do a 3D or a fancy fold. Um, so I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, but I'm sure it will be great. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.